Good evening, and welcome to our Chronological Bible Study. My name is Reverend William Pope Jr., and I'm pastor at Beulah Presbyterian Church of North Wilkesburg. Again, in this Chronological Bible Study, we will study God's Word from the book of Genesis all the way through to the book of Revelations, untwist the twisted scriptures, unravel the scriptural texts that most of today's secular organizations tend to stand on in order to push their agendas, and answer the questions that plagues the minds of most people. And as usual, you hear music playing in the background of all of my videos. The title of this selection is called House of Prayer, Intercession Music. And of course, that is by Kyle Lovey. So if you like what you hear, you can simply go to the Kyle Lovey Warfare and Worship Music YouTube channel and hit subscribe. Now, this afternoon, we'll be going into the book of Genesis chapter 21, and it's verses 1 through 34. And we should be able to get through this today because this is also a very short chapter uh, to take a look at. But it is the birth and near sacrifice of Isaac. And what it actually covers is the birth of Isaac, uh, Hagar and Ishmael being sent away, and Abraham's covenant with Abimelech. But before we go any further, let us open up with a quick word of prayer. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come to you right now, Lord. Just thank you for allowing us to come together to study your word. Lord, we thank you for all the things that we have learned thus far. And we are going into uh, chapter 21 with great expectations. So, Lord, we ask right now that you just continue to be with us, lead us, and guide us as we go throughout the further part of this study, that you may get all the honor and glory for all these things we ask. And count it in, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And again, if you have your Bibles, you can turn with me to Genesis chapter 21, and we'll be looking at verses 1 through 34. And the first seven verses have to do with the birth of Isaac. But if you don't have your Bibles, all you got to do is just simply go along with me, because I have it here on the screen for you. And the word of the Lord is read as thus. And the Lord visited Sarah as he said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had said. For Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son who was born to him, whom Sarah bore to him, Isaac. Then Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Now Abraham was 100 years old when his son Isaac was born to him. And Sarah said, God has made me laugh, and all who hear will laugh with me. She also said, Who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? For I have borne him a son in his old age. Verses 8 through 21 covers Hagar and Ishmael's departure. Verse 8, So the child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast on the same day that Isaac was weaned. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, scoffing. Therefore she said to Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, namely with Isaac. And the matter was very displeasing in Abraham's sight because of his son. But God said to Abraham, Do not let it be displeasing in your sight because of the lad or because of your bondwoman. Whatever Sarah has said to you, listen to her voice. For in Isaac your seed shall be called. Yet I will also make a nation of the son of the bondwoman because he is your seed. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and putting it on her shoulder, he gave it and the boy to Hagar and sent him and sent her away. Then she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. Verse 15. And the water in the skin was used up, and she placed the boy under one of the shrubs. Then she went and sat down across from him at a distance of about a bow shot. For she said to herself, 
let me not see the death of the boy. So she sat opposite him and lifted her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the lad. Then the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said to her, What ails you, Hagar? Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the lad where he is. Arise, lift up the lad, and hold him with your hand, for I will make him a great nation. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. And she went and filled the skin with water, and gave the lad a drink. So God was with the lad, and he grew and dwelt in the wilderness and became an archer. He dwelt in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother took a wife for him from the land of Egypt. Now verses 22 through 34 covers a covenant with Abimelech. Verse 22, And it came to pass at the time that Abimelech and Thilcol, the commander of his army, <clears throat> spoke to Abraham, saying, God is with you in all that you do. Now therefore, swear to me by God that you will not deal falsely with me, with my offspring, or with my prosperity, but that according to the kindness that I have done to you, you will do to me and to the land in which you have dwelt. And Abraham said, I will swear. Then Abraham rebuked Abimelech because of a well of water which Abimelech's servants had seized. And Abimelech said, I do not know who has done this thing. You did not tell me, nor had I heard of it until today. So Abraham took sheep and oxen and gave them to Abimelech and the two of them made a covenant. Verse 28, And Abraham set seven ewe lambs of the flock by themselves. Then Abimelech asked Abraham, What is the meaning of these seven ewe lambs which you have set by themselves? And he said, You will take these seven ewe lambs from my hand, that they may be my witnesses that I have dug this well. Therefore he called the place Beersheba, because the two of them swore an oath there. Thus they made a covenant at Beersheba. So Abimelech rose with Bichol, the commander of his army, and they returned to the land of the Philistines. Then Abraham planted a tamarisk tree in Beersheba, and there called on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. And Abraham stayed in the land of the Philistines many days. May the Lord add a blessing to his red word. Now as we look here at verses 1 through 7, and again it says, And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son, who was born to him, whom Sarah bore to him, Isaac. Then Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Now, Abraham was 100 years old when his son Isaac was born to him. And Sarah said, God has made me laugh, and all who hear will laugh with me. She also said, Who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? For I have borne him a son in his old age. So, who could have believed that Abraham would have, would have a son at a hundred years of age and live to raise him to adulthood? But, Doing the impossible is everyday business for God. Our big problems won't seem so impossible if we let God handle them, if we just let go of them, let go, and let God. And as we look again at verse 7, she also said, Who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? For I have borne him a son in his old age. 
So after repeated promises, a visit by two angels, and the appearance of the Lord himself, Sarah finally cried out with surprise and joy at the birth of her son. Because of her doubt, worry, and fear, she had forfeited the peace that she could have felt in God's wonderful promise to her. You see, we often get weary, but we know what God's promises are, so I guess it's just a part of human nature that causes us to get weary over certain things, especially when they're not happening when we think that they ought to be happening. The way to bring peace to a troubled heart is to focus on God's promises. Trust him to do exactly what he says he will do. Now, in the case of Isaac, in a family of forceful initiators, Isaac was the quiet, mind my own business type, unless he was specifically called on to take action. He was the protected only child from the time Sarah got rid of Ishmael until Abraham arranged his marriage to Rebekah. In his own family, Isaac had the patriarchal position, but Rebekah had the power. And rather than stand his ground, Isaac found it easier to compromise or lie to avoid uh, confrontations. In spite of these shortcomings, Isaac was part of God's plan. The model his father gave him included a priceless gift of faith in the one true God. God's promise to create a great nation through which he would bless the world was passed on by Isaac to his son Jacob. It is usually not hard to identify with Isaac in his weaknesses. But consider for a moment that God works through people in spite of and often through their shortcomings. As you pray, put in the words your desire to be available to God. You will discover that his willingness to use you is even greater than your desire to be used. Isaac's Strengths and Accomplishments he was the first descendant in fulfillment of God's promise to Abraham. He demonstrated great patience. His weaknesses and mistakes, under pressure he tended to lie. In conflict he sought to avoid confrontation. He played favorites between his sons and alienated his wife. Lessons from his life? We learn that patience often brings rewards. God keeps his promises. He remains faithful, though we're, we're often faithless. Let me say that again. God keeps his promises. He remains faithful, though we are often faithless. And plain favorites is sure to bring family conflict. The key verse concerning Isaac comes from Genesis chapter 17, verse 19. And it says, Then God said, No, Sarah, your wife shall bear a son. Oh, now this is where he's talking to Abraham. Then God said, No, Sarah, your wife shall bear a son, and you shall call his name Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his descendants after him. And again, that is Genesis chapter 17, verse 9. Now, as we look at verse 18, it says, Arise, lift up the lad, and hold him with your hand, for I will make him a great nation. So, what happened to Ishmael, and who are his descendants? Ishmael became the founder of a large tribe or nation. The Ishmaelites were nomads living in the wilderness of Sinai and Paran, which is south of Israel. One of Ishmael's daughters married Esau, Ishmael's nephew, as mentioned in Genesis chapter 28, verse 9. 
uh, where it says, So Esau went to Ishmael and took Mahalath, Mahalath, uh, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, the sister of Nebjoth, to be his wife in addition to the wives he had. And again, it's Genesis chapter 28, verse 9. The Bible pictures the Ishmaelites as hostile to Israel and to God, which is actually mentioned in the 83rd division of Psalms in verses 5 and 6, where it says, For they have consulted together with one consent. They form a confederacy against you. The tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites, Moab and the Hegrites. Now, in the case of Hagar, escape of some kind is usually the most tempting solution to our problems. Hagar was a person who used that approach. When the going got tough, she got going in the opposite direction. However, it is worthwhile to note that the biggest challenges Hagar faced was brought on by other people's choices. Sarah chose her to bear Abraham's child and Hagar probably had little to say about this matter because again, she happened to be Sarah's handmaid. So, you know, I can't see where she had a choice in the matter at all. Uh, it isn't hard to understand uh, how Hagar's pregnancy caused her to look down on Sarah. But that brought on hard feelings and Sarah consequently punished Hagar. This motivated her first escape. When she returned to the family and gave birth to Ishmael, Sarah's continued barrenness must have contributed to her bitterness on both sides. So she was bitter with Abraham and bitter with Hagar. When Isaac was finally born, Sarah looked for any excuse to have Hagar and Ishmael sent away. She found it when she caught Ishmael teasing Isaac. In the wilderness, out of water and facing the death of her son, Hagar once again tried to escape. She walked away so that she wouldn't have to watch her son die, and once again, God graciously intervened. Have you noticed how patiently God operates to make our escape attempts fail? You know, sometimes it seems like we escape our problems, but it's only for a little while because those things seem to resurface, and they continue to resurface until we actually face them. Have you begun to learn that escape is only a temporary solution? And you see, I just said that. You see, God's continual desire is for us to face our problems with his help. We experience his help most clearly in and through conflicts and difficulties, not away from me. Are there problems in your life for which you've been using the Hagar solution? Choose one of those problems Ask for God's help and begin to face that problem today. Hagar's strengths and accomplishments. Uh, she was mother of Abraham's first child, Ishmael, who became the founder of the Arab nations. Uh, her weaknesses and mistakes, when faced with problems, she tended to run away. And I know quite a few people who, who do that kind of thing today. Her pregnancy brought out strong feelings of pride and arrogance. Lessons from her life. God is faithful to his plan and promises, even when humans complicate the process. God shows himself as one who knows us and wants to be known by us. So again, you know, he had constant dialogue with Hagar. Every time she called herself running away, he spoke to her or sent an angel to speak to her and 
put her on the right track. So again, you know, he constantly made this uh, attempt to have a connection with her. And then the key verse concerning Hagar comes from Genesis chapter 16, verse 9. The angel of the Lord said to her, Return to your mistress and submit yourself under her hand. As we look at verse 31, it says, Therefore he called that place Beersheba, because the two of them swore an oath there. So Beersheba, uh, the southernmost city of Israel, lays on the edge of the vast desert that stretched as far as Egypt to the southwest and Mount Sinai to the south. The area described as being from Dan in the north to Beersheba in the south was often used to describe the traditional boundaries of the promised land as mentioned in 2 Chronicles chapter 30 verse 5 where it says so they resolved to make a proclamation throughout all of Israel from Beersheba to Dan that they should come to keep the Passover to the Lord God of Israel at Jerusalem since they had not done it for a long time in a prescribed manner. Beersheba's southern location and the presence of several wells in the area may explain why Abraham settled in this place. Beersheba was also the home of Isaac, Abraham's son. And guess what? That concludes our study of the birth of Isaac, the departure of Hagar and Ishmael, and Abraham's covenant with Abimelech. So next week, we will look at Genesis chapter 22, and again, you can see that that's a short one also, because it's only 24 verses, which is entitled, Abraham's Faith Being Tested. So please feel free to read ahead, and then don't forget about our other streaming broadcast on the Beulah Presbyterian Facebook page or on the Beulah Presbyterian Church of North Wilkesboro YouTube channel. So again, I'd like to thank you for tuning in this uh, afternoon for our chronological Bible study. And then don't forget to tune in tomorrow for WRW, Wednesday's Rhema Word, which comes to you at 12 noon, where I come to you uh, with a word from the Lord. Uh, we'll take a look at a scriptural text, and I'll do my best to take seven minutes to explain to you what the Lord is revealing to us. And then on Thursday nights at 645, Tune in for Let Us Up With The Lord Together, a topical Bible study for with, And we're studying fasting and prayer. And we're on the last of our fast, which is actually the St. Paul fast. And we'll be looking at uh, the book of Acts, chapter 9, verse 9. And actually, it will be part 2 of the St. Paul fast. And then we'd also like to invite you to come and worship with a Beulah Presbyterian Church at 110 Sparta Road of North Wilkesboro, where our, our doors are always open and they swing on the hinges of faith, hope, and love. So again, like I said, I'd like to thank you for tuning in, and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow at the noonday hour for WRW Wednesday's Rhema Word. So let us close with a quick word of prayer. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come to you right now, Lord. Just thank you for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. And thank you for allowing us to come together at this moment to be able to study your word. And Lord, we ask right now that what we have studied does not fall on deaf ears, but it continues to meditate in our hearts and minds to help us to be the people that you would have us to be. For all these things we ask and count it done in Jesus' name we pray. Let the people of God say, Amen. Again, I'd like to say God bless and we will see you again real soon at tomorrow at the noonday hour. You may go in peace.